Today we're going to take a look at a simplified version of AutoStreamer, the AutoStreamer web app, which allows you to create courses about any subject. Here you can select how many chapters you'd like to create. Let's select one. For speed purposes, you have to enter your API key, OpenAI API key, or it will automatically detect it from your environment variables, and there are different languages available. Let's pick a topic. I'm currently learning Next.js, so let's just try this real quick. Uh, as you can see, once we click, this waiting uh, starts. Of course, we're going to take a look at the code. We are running this from a Fest API server. Uh, the code files for this project will be available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description at the architect level. So here we are. So now once the course, is gener uh, course outline is generated, we, it automatically switches to the next sc screen where we get to see the generated course outline, comprehensive overview of Next.js. We can review this. If you don't like this, we can regenerate the outline. Otherwise, here we have some options. Max words is how many words roughly will we, will we have in each chapter, such as each one of these uh, chapters. Uh, type of courses, whether we are dealing with the general topics or code-based topics. Currently, we are dealing with code-based topics and, of course, uh, language. And then we click to generate the course. And this will just be a moment. Uh, we will be able to download the course at any time. This is a simplified version of the AutoStreamer app that I created. So it's only it's text only. If you click this link at autostreamer.live, you see you can actually find out more information about the full version of AutoStreamer. Anyway, as you can see, our course is being generated. We can actually jump, jump through the different chapters. It's actually currently being generated. But we can download the course anytime. Click on download it. We have downloaded the course. We can actually start this now. And as you can see, this is the course as at the point of when we click the download button, but the rest of the course is still being generated. So this is uh, really useful, works well. Uh, also, this uh, HTML file, of course, comes with some links, which actually links to my website, echoive.live and my other website, Hold high, but feel free to change these links. At any point, we can go back to the auto streamer and then we can click on regenerate outline to come back to the uh, outline generation. We can select up to five or max chapters, max meaning we will have as many chapters as possible. You can select any type of course. Let's try something else, for example, like history of Rome. And I click generate uh, course outline. We did say mix, so this is going to take a moment. We will be reviewing the code shortly, overviewing it actually, because there's so much code, I won't be able to go over it. Uh, but I will actually explain uh, what happens with Fast API and things like that. The code files will be available at my Patreon at the architect level. Okay, here we go. Our course outline is generated, starting with founding of Rome, the Roman Republic. It has six chapters Roman innovations and contributions. Here we can switch to general topics, but sometimes here, when you click on this, when you're here and before, if you, without changing any of this, when you click on generate course, you will, you might get an error. Uh, I'm still working on fixing that. Just, but if you modify any of these, then you should be fine. Here we are going to select general topics and then generate the course again. And now we're going to generate a course about uh, Roman Empire. So this works really well. I just restarted the server just to show you the error message. When you reach this page for the first time, click on Generate Course. It says, please update. If you change any one of the settings, then it will actually generate the course, just so you know. If you want to find out more about the full AutoStreamer, you can actually visit autostreamer.live. Currently, it's uh, available for $100. Also, I do want to mention that this footer links actually is not working, uh, but they are there. You can actually modify the index.html to put your own links there as well if you want to deploy this app somewhere. So uh, this this works well. It works with Fast API. We have the index.py file, which is our main app, and now we have the index.css with lots of styling, and then the template index.html, which actually serves the main website, plus downloadable content here, new HTML content. So this is quite long, about thousand lines, uh, and also we have the UI element for the sidebar, for example, and some theme variables, which we are using. I won't be able to review the code in full detail, but I will actually explain what's going on in the index.py file and generally how this how something like this works. So you can get the general idea. We are also using the gpt calls.py file, which is a course GPT helper here 
uh, at this at this at this file where we are making the calls to GPT to get the outlines and the actual course generation. So all that being said, let's start overviewing the code. And like I said, uh, if you want to have access to this, you can download it from Patreon. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well. Before I start reviewing the code, uh, I do want to say that I will include a review of how the full version of AutoStreamer works at the end of the video. You can actually watch if you want to know more about that. Let's begin with the gptcalls.py file, since this is where uh, our chat GPT course helper is. Uh, so here we are defining a class called chat GPT course helper. It's going to take API key type, of course, language, and max words, and it's going to initialize our open AI. Uh, and here we have a call GPT for tutoring on topic, which is uh, going to check if we are doing code-based topics. Uh, if you do, then we are actually going to insert this code into the system message. Otherwise, it's not going to have that part. Uh, otherwise, the course type text is empty, and then the code is empty. And this is the system message where we are asking, you're a detail-oriented patient, an extremely helpful tutor uh, on whatever the course name is that we have specified. Uh, you speak and write only in the language that is specified. You're helping a student with that course name. You're currently on whatever the chapter that is provided, because this is going to continually take in uh, chapter uh, names. Please explain the topic on this type of course. Return the explanation only as a JSON. You can pause and read this, but so it's going to, this is, we are using JSON mode. We're going to return chapter, topic, preamble, explanation. Uh, so these are going to be the actual course material. And then we also add additional user content just to make sure that begin the explanation for the topic. Each value should be less than. However, max words was specified. Don't be too verbose. Always provide preamble and explanation. Also code when necessary. So this is the uh, method that actually generates the actual course itself. And then here we are making a call to GPT-4 Turbo with JSON object as the response format. We set a timeout. That means if the API fails to respond in 30 seconds, then we break. Then we load the response and then we pretty much return it. Here we have another method called generate curriculum, which is going to take in a subject and course length. And then it's going to actually, so we are doing something here where we are, we are because, because we are specifying how many chapters, then we are actually dynamically adjusting the uh, system prompt. So this curriculum depth, as you see, goes at the bottom of the system message. And we are dynamically adjusting it here. So here we say generate only as many concepts as specified by chapter length. Smaller the amount of chapters means smaller, more concise curriculum, but giving still covering the entire subject matter. And then here we check uh, if we have less than six, meaning one, two, three, four, five. Then we use this and we give the length, course length here. For example, chapter length might be one, two, three, four. Otherwise, please generate the most detailed curriculum for them. That means if the setting is set to max. As, as we have seen here. So if it's set to one, two, three, four, five, we use the first portion, portion of that curriculum length. If it's set to max, then we use the second part, which says, please generate the most detailed curriculum, cover as many concept chapters, as many topics for each concept as possible. And we make the call. Again, we have a system message. And here we explain uh, how we, we want the, uh, this object to be returned, which is going to be for each concept. Uh, and then well, I guess you can call this chapters, and then we're going to have multiple topics underneath it, so on and so forth, for as many uh, as we have the curriculum depth, and we dynamically put that uh, dynamically generated string here. And it's going to return a JSON, and then we simply return the JSON. So we actually use this in the index.py file where we are defining our fast API app. So we are using Jinja2 templates to serve the index.html, which is under the templates folder. Index.html serves not only serves our uh, original uh, website, as we have seen, such as this, but also the uh, downloadable content. And if you actually scroll down, 
to uh, about line 600. Uh, 600, we see that new HTML content. So this is the downloadable content, which is mostly static, but towards the end, we dynamically actually generate some stuff. We add some stuff to it, uh, such as the footer and the links, which is here is where you can actually change those stuff. We uh, actually sanitize some link stuff. So a lot is going on. So this would require you to kind of take a look at it for a moment. But we are serving that index.html using, here we specify our fast API app. And we say that our static, we point, uh, we mount our static files, which includes our index.css. I'm also not going to go over this, but this just specifies some style elements, okay, that we are using in the index.html. We do have to mount it when you're using fast API files, we just point it to where, where it is. And now with the Jinja templates, we point the direct to the correct directory, which is the templates directory. And then with the app.get, we define our first route, which is a slash only, which means this is our home page. And when the user goes to the home page, then we return the index.html as a template. Our second route is again a post request of, because we are going to send back information, which we'll be using. Which the route this route is called generate course outline. And this will, uh, we're defining a function here. We are taking a request and we await the data. This data object is going to include the API key, course title, language, and number of chapters, which will be returned from the front end uh, from the slider plus the type of course, the API key, and the language. And once we have those, then we just simply going to print it for information purposes. Then we initialize our chat GPT course output from GPT calls.py. And now we actually call the generate curriculum function with the course title, number of chapters and language. As we have seen here, we based on the course chapter length, we initialize curriculum depth and then we dynamically create the system message. Okay, and then, so this is a, this generate course outline, we use a regular fetch request, but our next endpoint, which is a generate course, is actually of a WebSocket type. So here we create a WebSocket connection from index.html, which we will take a look at. And we, in the backend, in our server app, we accept that WebSocket connection. Let's actually quickly see where this is happening. Okay, we can see that in our index.html at line 220, we make a fetch request to the first endpoint, the generate course outline. This one, of course, grabs all the necessary information in JavaScript uh, as far as the API key and language. It's a body with json.stringify and then actually fetches that, just returns that information. And underneath here, we also have a WebSocket connection. And this WebSocket connection actually connects to the generate course. Okay? And once the connection socket is open, then we send all this other information which we are receiving here. Await WebSocket connection, then we receive the data, and that data includes API key, curriculum language, type of course, course name, and max words. That is the stuff that we were seeing actually on the once we generated the course outline and then we print all that information just into the terminal and then we initialize our chat gpt course helper and then with the well, uh, we, we call that uh, we, we initialize it and then here in the event generator we initialize a empty chapter history since we now we have a curriculum we go over each concept and then for each topic per concept we remove the restricted characters so some characters just don't appear right. And then we do that here. And, and we append each topic to the chapters list. And then here we initialize the, the sidebar from the UI element, which we are creating uh, using Python. So this is interesting, actually, that we can actually construct an HTML element in Python and then return it with, from, uh, our, from, from within a uh, web socket. And, and then right here for each uh, once we have our chapters created, uh, sorry, as we are looping over for each concept and then for each topic, for each topic, we call all GPT tutorial on topic and then we get the explanation. And this explanation is a JSON, which includes a preamble explanation and code if uh, necessary. And then uh, once this is all ready, then we yield the text as an object like this back to the front end. And in the front end, once we receive it, we do, we do pass that information, sanitize the topics, so we don't run into any errors as far as naming. And then we get all the information and we uh, add those information to the DOM. Uh, I mean, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, to the document by using the get element by ID to wherever they are appropriate. 
So this is pretty much how our WebSocket connection works. So as this loop is being executed, this WebSocket connections are going to allow us to generate the necessary information from the GPT API and then send it as it becomes available to index.html, which uh, helps us put it into the uh, elements as necessary. Now, another interesting part of this code is where we are creating the downloaded content. So we're going to have a download button, as you've seen. So we are initializing a HTML file here, and now we are dynamically creating data loaders, streamer display content, and scripts, which we are creating right here. As you can see, the scripts, streamer display content, and the and the data loader, and we insert it into the into the HTML, which we can then allow uh, the click of a button to download. So this is an interesting implementation allows you to download. And the rest of the HTML is actually just, of course, styling. We are using Tailwind and Font Awesome and uh, Prism for displaying the code on the HTML. And the rest of it is just, as you can see, HTML elements styled with Tailwind and then quite a lot of JavaScript to accomplish uh, all that AutoStreamer web version does. So I hope at least this gives you an idea. I apologize that I can't go over a thousand lines of code, but at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, uh, placing things that you receive in your backend to the right places. As you, as you saw, we have two endpoints. One is a regular fetch. Generate course outline happens in a single shot, meaning we receive the course title, and then we use the GPT calls as method to generate that course, and then just return it, just as like this object. Uh, with the web sockets, we have a general loop which goes over that curriculum that was generated and then returns this text as an object to, as it yields it to the WebSocket. And when we receive those things in the index.html, we use JavaScript to mount them, so to speak, or place them into the HTML as appropriate. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, the core, this project files will be available on my Patreon. And now I'll also have a preview of the full auto streamer course. This was available for $200, but now it is only for $100. If you have downloaded this auto streamer, if you purchased it for $200 in the last month, please contact me at Discord and I will offer you a one hour one on one meeting. Thank you very much. And I hope you'll enjoy the next part of this video. This was the end of our video, but I'd like to talk quickly about my auto streamer version three project. The streamer version three is a PyQt powered Py installer packaged Python project that I came up with. It uses your OpenAI API key to create course websites such as this one in real time. This is also deployed at Railway and including with audio. The ELIF clause in Python. So you have quite a lot of choices such as six different uh, voice choices and over 50 languages that you can choose from. You can choose light or dark theme. Uh, when you go here to generate courses, you just enter uh, a, a course that you would like to generate. For example, we just did permaculture basics, and I can pick how many chapters I'd like to generate. And I'm just going to go ahead and generate it real quick. This, should, this shouldn't take too long. Our curriculum was created successfully. I can go into view course outline and search for that uh, permaculture. And I, as I can see, ethics and principles, design methods and tools, and practical applications. I can then actually uh, select this uh, course outline and continue to generate the course created in light mode. And then uh, the website will launch automatically and will be created for you in real time. And you can record it as I'm doing right now or actually live stream it. It's really up to you. And once it begins, we'll be able to Ethics of care for the streaming. earth. Permaculture revolves around three core ethics, one of which is the care for the earth. This ethic I'm going to go ahead and pause it. If I were to let this run, then this entire course will be generated live and I can listen to it live. I'm going to go ahead and stop. And if I were to let this course be generated, then it'll be under my view and launch generated courses. For example, I just created a course called Financial Basics for. Let's go ahead and launch. It's like this. I can actually switch to uh, light mode as well, I believe. Uh, I'm sorry, dark mode. And then I can re revisit this course. Both, uh, I can zoom in. Both is in text and the importance of emergency funds. Yeah, it has three chapters, which I can easily use. The benefit of this uh, and what you'll get out of it is that uh, instead of chatting with in a disorganized manner, this allows you to create uh, structured courses that you can uh, run and listen to before you go to sleep 
or just fill your time. When you have uh, just five minutes or 10 minutes worth, you can visit these courses back whenever, anytime you like. So AutoStreamer, you can download a free demo for from autostreamer.live. I'll put the link in the description. Mac version is coming soon. You can, if you click on the download free demo, it will take you to my uh, Google Drive download. And these are the files you'll be downloading. Autostreamerdemo.exe is the same thing as this, except with limited features. And if you wanted to download the full version, then click in this, will take you to my Patreon shop, where it's currently only for $200 instead of $300. You can read all about it in uh, the website. You do need an OpenAI API key for this to work. And sometimes you're, this is a Py installer package, the PyQt Python application. So your McAfee or malware bytes may uh, flag it as, as not good. But as a matter of fact, all you have to do is just make an exception for the program. And if you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord or ask me a question that you have in Discord. Well, thank you for watching and do let me know what you think of this project. I was really proud of this one. And like I said, the code files will be available at uh, Patreon. And I also have special tiers for one-on-one -on -one meetings with me, if that's something you're interested in. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files, so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I, what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well.